I never really knew what break statements were. I would just see them in examples and kind of copy it and kind of get a vague idea of what they were. So if you're in the same boat that I was in, I'm here to eliminate the confusion for you and tell you exactly how to use break statements, what they are, just clear all the bad stuff away. Basically a break statement is a tiny little keyword you put to exit a loop and I'll be showing you how you can use it in your programs today. But if you're new here, my name is Alex. I make a Java tutorial on this channel every single week and I've been doing so for almost a year now. And thanks to your support, uh, this channel has grown to over 3000 subscribers. So if you think you'd be interested in a new Java tutorial from me just like this every week, then consider subscribing. Let's get on with this break statement in Java tutorial. Um, pretty much just like I said, a break statement is just a little keyword with a semicolon that exits a loop. But um, I'll get into some examples right now. So I'm just gonna file new Java project just so we're all on the same page. I'm gonna call it like um, breakdance because I like puns. Open that up and then right click on the source folder and go to new class. We'll just call it like break down. Uh, hit this first check mark for the public static void and then hit finish. So basically, I'm sure you've seen this before um, but are just a little confused. The break statement looks like this. But if we write that and then hover over it, it says break cannot be used outside of a loop or switch. We get red iron lines and it's an error. It's not where it's supposed to be right now. A break statement exits a loop or switch. So let's exit a loop with a break statement. Today we have a while loop and we'll just create an infinite while loop here and we'll just print out hi, because hi is a fun word. If we save it and run it, our program is gonna go crazy here in a second, and it's just gonna print hi over and over infinitely. I'm just gonna stop that by clicking this red square. If we put a break statement inside of here, this means that it'll exit the loop. So let's save it and run it and we see hide printout one time. Now, why does it print out one time? Well, when we click the green run button, that runs code inside of the main method, so anything inside of these curly braces gets run. We see the first line is just empty, and the first piece of code we see is while true. This runs code inside of this curly braces if what's in the parentheses is true. So now we go into here and we print hide, and that's how this gets printed out. And then we see the break statement. This break is purple, which means it's a keyword. And this keyword is very special to Java because it knows what it does. We don't have to put any extra parentheses or quotes or anything because it knows that break just means get out of these curly braces, get out of whatever loop it's in. So then we break, we get out of it, we see another empty line and that that's that. We just, we print high. Let's do another example where we have like, um, an integer i equals to zero, and we're just modifying our loop a tiny bit. We'll increment i at the end here. Right now we get an error. That's because this break statement is before it, so it'll never reach this. But I'm just gonna comment this out by doing two forward slashes, turning it into a comment so it won't get run. So if we save and run this together now, then we'll see hi be printed out three times, just like a normal loop. i is zero, Zero is less than three, so we print high, increment it. One's less than three, print high again. Two is less than three, print high again. Three is not less than three, so we leave. But if we take this break and put it, say, at the end, those other two highs don't get run because we break out of it. I really love examples, so I'm just gonna keep doing examples for you. Let's do a break statement with the for loop and let's loop through an array of integers. So let's create an array of say numbers and we have some say multiples of 10 in here. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And we wanna loop through it. So we can do that by doing a for loop. We'll start at zero, go until the length of numbers, and increment by one each time and just print out that number. 
the numbers of whatever index I were at. If we save and run this, then we'll get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the numbers in the numbers array. But what if we wanted to stop at 30? You could do some math to find where 30 is in the array and then change the for loop to match that, but that's kind of tricky. Or you could say, if the value is 30, then break, break out of it. So we'll turn that English into code. If it's 30, then break. So we can do an if statement like that. If the numbers current value is equal to 30, then break. Let's try it now. And we get 10, 20. Because once we hit 30, we hit this break and we exited these curly braces. I'll walk through this code again because I know that would help me a lot if I was just learning Java to walk through line by line of how the code's working. So we click the green run button and we hop into the main method. Anything in between these curly braces gets run. The first line of code we see is declaring an integer array called numbers. And the values inside of there are 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Next, we see the keyword for, that means it's a for loop. We're starting integer i at zero. We're gonna loop until the length of this array and go one by one each time. So i is zero. If numbers array at position zero is equal to 30, then break. Position at zero is 10, so we don't run this, but we do print out that value, 10 numbers of zero. And that's why 10 gets printed out. Next, since it's a for loop, we go back up to the top, increment i by one. Now i is one. Numbers at index one is 20. It's not 30, so we print 20. Boop, we go back up, i is now two. Numbers of index two is 30. So we go in here, we break, and then we jump out of whatever loop we're inside of. It doesn't break out of the if statement. When break is found, it, it jumps out of the loop it's inside of. Not the if statement, not anything else other than a switch case, but I'm gonna get to that. It jumps out of the closest loop it's in. So that's why it does 10, 20. Oh, we found 30, we must break out. So we did the break statement with a while loop and a for loop, and we pretty much learned that when you type break and a semicolon, it's purple because Java knows what break means. And that just means exit the curly braces of the loop it's inside of. You can also use a break statement in Java with switch case statements. A switch case statement is pretty much a glorified if else statement. And it looks like this. So if we have an integer, I say, say it's equal to two. No, say it's equal to one. We'd have our switch here and the variable we want. This is where we put our case statement. And I hate how it tabs in like that. It should look like this. Case zero. That means if i is zero, then say we'll print out zero and break. If i is one, then we'll print one and we'll break. Otherwise, if it's anything else, then we'll just print out WTF, man, and then break. So if we run this, then we get one because we jump in the main method. We see there's a variable i equal to one. We want to switch i between either zero, one, or anything else. If it's zero, then we'll print zero and jump out of this. If it's one, then we'll print one and jump out of this. And that's exactly what it did. We saw that i is one, we print one, we see a break statement, which means get out of the loop or switch case it's in. This is the switch case it's in, and then we're at the end. That's why it just prints one. Break statements can get confusing with nested loops, but just remember, it breaks out of the one it's in. So let's do one with nested loops. So we've got a for loop here, and we go to five. And then inside of this for loop is another for loop. 
j which goes to three. And then inside of here, we do something like um, print i, oops. Ugh, don't you hate when that happens? You type, try to type too fast. I plus J, the column between. Just so we can kind of see what's going on, how it's working, this needs to have another plus here. If we ran this now, we'd probably get like 15 outputs. Yeah, we get 0, 0, 0, 1, all this, all this nested for loop stuff. If you are confused about nested for loops, you can check out an in-depth video I did on nested for loops explaining everything step by step for you. But today we're learning about break statements. Let's throw a break statement in here and see what happens. Yellow underline. This is yellow underline because it's it sees into the future. It says there's a break statement here. It's never gonna actually increment at the end of the loop. But let's just let's just see what happens here. Aha! Cool. The first thing that happens is we enter this for loop. Then we enter another for loop. We print ij, which is zero, zero. And then we break out of the loop it's in, which is this. Once that's done, we go back to the top for loop, go into this for loop again. i is now one and j is zero. So that's why it's one, zero. And break out of this. So it only breaks out of the innermost loop. It doesn't break out of all the loops. And that was the biggest confusion to me. I'm pretty sure I had this problem till I was like a junior in college. I still didn't know. I've been programming for like four years and never really understood this too well. So this is something I wish I knew when I first started. I hope this video helped you out. Good luck on all your studies and have a great rest of your week.